And that's four more. And uh, I don't think this man has gone indeed for six. It was beautifully picked up by Graham Wood. start for Bob Willis and for England John Dyson goes without scoring and England have broken through trying to fend it away there on the offside and a very neat catch that's one of the more unorthodox strokes of the morning and you can throw in any of the ones played by Paul Allett and Bob Willis. It gets uh, Kim Hughes off the mark, so it'll be a, a great relief for him. Oh, that's out. That is plum. Two wickets in the one over. Bob Willis after Graham Wood hit him for four and six in his first over. His hundredth wicket against Australia was the one that took Dyson, and now Hughes has gone. 24 for two. Yes, I think it's held up and he's gone. Yellick doesn't want to go. He thinks it hit the ground before it was caught, but it's held up by both of them. That slip, umpire constant gives him. And three wickets in and over to Willis. That one from the last delivery. That's out. And Allard takes his first test match wicket, 24 for four Australia, and the whole thing is in tatters. It's a loosener from both of them, and really loosened up by Kent. 53 for four, short run from Bob Willis. And runs there for Alan Border. Very firmly hit pull shot. Both of them right arm around the wicket now to Border. What a catch! David Gower. A brilliant piece of fielding that. One of the best catches you'll see in a year of cricket. The fifth Australian wicket goes down in the last over before lunch. Border caught Gower by both of them 11. Kent remains 21 not out. And what a session. What a performance that was. 58 for five. The Australians, they were 24 for four at one stage. At lunchtime, 58 for five. And uh, just three batsmen there into double figures. Wood, who was Allett's uh, first test match victim. And uh, Border, 11. Kent, 21 not out. And uh, what a performance. That really was almost as disastrous as uh, Headingley and Edgbaston. Well, Bob Willis was the destroyer there. Three wickets in the one over. Here he is now, straight away after lunch, coming into bowl to Rodney Marsh. Oh, and that was a ridiculous stroke by Rodney Marsh. He'll kick himself, both of them taking a simple catch. It was a sharp one. He made it look easy. Willis takes his fourth wicket, and Australia are 59 for six. And Marsh... First going to play a stroke, then deciding he'd take the bat away, and the result was that he just simply edged it straight to both of them. And Australia are in total disarray at 59 for six. And that's an example of those lovely strokes he was playing before lunch. He's a marvellous player off the back foot, Martin Kent, used to the hard wickets at the Gabba at Brisbane and uh, beautifully struck. Pleasantly timed. And indeed, four runs. Effortly stroked by Ray Bright. Doesn't have much of a back lift, but... Uh, I think it's fair. It, it was a half volley, wasn't it? You know, and by every sense of the way, uh, word and the game, clearly that is a ball that should be going for four with an attacking field. A 
and that's perfectly safe. Absolutely crash off the middle of the bat. Whether as he played the shot he was quite certain where it was going, I wouldn't be 100% certain. He up the 100 in only the 20th over of the innings. That looks like two more. And he's gone, yes. Going to force that away with all his might through the covers. Possibly the one which carried straight on with the arm from Embry. We'll have to see it from another angle to decide on that, but a little edge and Alan not doing the rest. So Kent's splendid innings. Ending at 104, straight 104 for seven. That's another of the many milestones passed in this series. <laughs> and has had the better of that in a slightly unorthodox way. Drinks are ready to come out. Now with Derek Underwood on the right and Trevor Chappell on the left doing the job. Well bowled, and uh, he got it away. In the end, it was the quicker ball from Embury. It was very well struck by Ray Bright, but it was that curving top spinner that goes a little bit with the arm. Well, Willis is at the deep back at square, but uh, neither he nor Boycott will be able to save that. It's a well judged stroke by Lilly. It's fair to go past the 120 mark. a straightforward catch. You can't have anything more straightforward than that. To Graham Goose behind square leg. Don't think Lily could believe it for a moment. This really is Botham's uh, half year, isn't it? He can do anything at the moment, whereas he couldn't do a thing early in the summer. Just comes on, rolls over his arm, and Lily cracks it away behind square leg, and Graham Gooch didn't have to move a whisker. Lily caught Gooch, bowled both them 13. And he's rolled him all over the place. That goes a leg stump. Another success for Paul Allett, so he's having a very good day. Undefeated 50 with the bat, and this is first test match, and now his second wicket. 126 to 9, the Australians tumble down to, and Whitney goes, as they say, without troubling the scores. Six for nine as Alderman faces his first ball. Roared in by the crowd. And got an inside edge. Bob Willis will have to hurry. And out came the big right boot. And Alderman comes through for two. Both McGinn to Bright. Bright now in 22. And he's gone. Little edge through to the keeper. Simple chance to Alan Knott and Australia all out in dramatic style here for 130, giving England a lead.